Welcome to this lesson on the tune Atherfield for the DG Melodeon. A few years ago when I was very new to this instrument, somebody sent me a recording a video, in fact, by a guy called Andy Cutting. He was playing a tune called The Abyss, which I immediately fell in love with. I liked this tune so much that I decided to buy the album. On the album was this tune, Atherfield, uh, played by Andy on the Melodeon, accompanied by uh, Mike McGoldrick on the flute. Um, if you haven't heard this album, check it out. I think it's really wonderful and it's been a constant source of inspiration to me over the last five and a half years. My version of Atherfield is a bit dumbed down, I suppose, but I think it still sounds pretty nice. We're getting away from the, the dreaded umpa um, a lot of the time, and it's got quite a unique rhythm, I think. We're in the key of E minor, which means to say that our root note, our E, is on the D row. And as such, I've made all the D row notes uh, have normal uh, shaped heads, and the notes on the G row I've given diamond shaped heads. Now E minor is the relative minor of G major and as such it has the same key signature, uh, F sharp, meaning to say that all Fs are sharpened in this piece. Well on this instrument all the Fs are F sharp, anyway, apart from this note here, which is called an accidental, this note is an F uh, on my Melodian's button number one, on the push, on the G row, but all the other uh, Fs are F sharp anyway. You can see that the time signature is 6-8. 6-8 is what we call compound duple time. Uh, compound because it's a mixture, duple because it's two groups. In fact, it's two groups of three. So yes, it is six quavers, but split into two main groups of three quavers or their equivalent in each group. Uh, we'll understand more about that as we go. Uh, you can see a repeat sign, so this A section is going to get repeated, uh, as does the B section. There are no pickup bars in this, so we're straight in on bar number one, and we start on our root note on the D row. It's an E. My melodeon is fourth button start, so my E is on button number four on the pull. If I were to play that button and push the bellows, that would give me my root note, my D, of that row, but I'm pulling it, gives me the E. Now you can see it's a dotted crotchet. Right, a dotted crotchet is the equivalent of a crotchet plus a quaver, or if you like, three quavers. So in other words, it takes up the whole of the first half of this first bar. So you play it and count three. You go one, two, three, one, two, three. And as you do that, you play an E bass, that's this button here, button number two, inside row, use finger number two. And then if you play this button above that button, button number one inside row, that'll give you an E minor chord, which you play on the third beat of the bar. So that's your first half of the first bar. It doesn't make a lot of sense on its own, but it will do when we get the next bit in. You can see that all the notes in this bar are on the D row. They've all got normal uh, egg-shaped heads, if you like. Um, then you go to the button below, uh, still pulling, that gives you a G. Now play the same button and push in, that gives you the F sharp, and then pull again gives you the G. So. You can get those three notes just by playing the button once, pressing the button once, and using the bellows. Uh, it's on the pull to start with push and then pull. I'm not sure I always do that. I think probably I tend to repress the button when I play the G again. So I put a dagger on the middle note there, uh, the F sharp. I think probably I would use the bellows to play that note. And notice you play the E bass uh, with the G, the first G, and the E minor chord with the second G. So, in other words, you're playing the chords on beats one, three, four, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So playing the bass like that, it gives you that kind of loping feel. And you keep it all nice and short. So I'll just play that first bar. One, two. 
And that's just I counted two, not six. Counting six is a bit silly because, yes, it is six quavers, but it's two groups. So it's two main beats. One and two. One and two. Like that. Now, there's a push note, isn't there? An F sharp. So make sure you lift off the bass when you play that. You don't want... You don't want that um, bass button being held in, and so you get an unwanted B bass there. Okay, lift off in that middle note in that second group of three quavers. Okay, that's pretty good, isn't it?